One of the things that uh, for, for these techniques, low fire techniques, is uh, basically I feel like I'm just stretching canvases for the techniques. Um, I'm trying to make pots that are fairly smooth. Um, I use a smooth clay body. Um, if you use something like Soldate 60, when, even if it's smooth when you're finished with the pot, by the time it gets bisked, the grog will come to the surface of the pot. Uh, grog doesn't shrink, it's pre-shrunk. So even though you have a glassy smooth surface on the, the wet clay, by the time it dries and then it's bisque fired, the surface of the pot will have bumps in it. And you put sedge on your pot and you shine it up and you end up with a bumpy shiny surface. Every one of the bumps diffracts light. It also doesn't have a feel to it. Uh, go ahead and pick these pots up when you get a chance and just feel the surface of them and they have a, they have a nice feel to it. Um, the, uh, so what I'm going to do is go, quickly go through some throwing demos to show you how I, I approach getting a smooth surface on the pot. So. Uh, I used to uh, throw in a pottery studio, uh, a production studio, we crank planters out all day long. And they were planters that had a spill tray in them, and they're all one piece. Uh, it was how many hundreds of them you could make per day. So you got 25 cents to $2 a piece. If you're throwing a half a bag of clay, you got $2 for your pots. So it was a matter of throwing very quickly. I would just take a, a bag and cut it into pieces, square pieces going down on the wheel, and then I'd fight them into shape. All of my pots ended up D-shaped. The, the round pot would end up having a warped edge on them. I could find them in Walmart and Kmart because mine were the ones that were D-shaped rims. And I never could figure out at that time, I'm not the brightest bulb, um, if you take a, a, a square bag of clay and cut it in pieces and slam it down, the outer edges of the bag are more compressed than the center of the clay because it's extruded, extruded in a square shape. <coughs> and it's square on the wheel head. All of those forces will translate into a bowl's rim when it is at high fire temperature. It gets very loose and almost like putty at that and so anything that is a stress translates to the rim. So that, and I was beating myself up, I was throwing 625 pounds of uh, clay a day, um, or was supposed to be. And you get worn out toward the end of the week. Um, so I had a fellow potter beside me, and this kid was 18, 19 years old, and he was throwing half bags of clay all day long, didn't even break a sweat. And I didn't figure out what he was doing at the time. But years later, it finally came to me. And this is where we're headed with this. Number one is wedge your clay up, get it in a, a fairly uniform either cylinder or ball shape, and put it pretty close to the center of the wheel. This is all basic, but if it's off the center of the wheel, stop and get it on the center before you get going because you, you will end up not using up all of your energy just trying to get it to center. I just cut my hand on here. That's centered. I'm going to bring it up once, put it back down again. But if you get it wedged up well and you put it pretty much on the center of the wheel, you don't have to do all this uh, <coughs> fancy stuff for centering. And we only have so many pots in this. We, only, we have a preordained number of pots that our arms will allow us to make. Uh, and uh, you can increase that number if you don't beat yourself to death trying to center all the time. Another one of the things that I struggled with over the years was getting cracks in the bottom of my pots. And the, the way to decrack the bottom of your pots is take one of these oblong shaped ribs and run it on the bottom of the pot and it compresses the bottom of the, the pot uniformly and that will 
take care of a lot of the cracking problems. I'm just smoothing it out and compressing it. One of the uh, uh, beginning potter and intermediate potter struggles is you've got this donut shape attached to the wheel head. What you want is a elongated cylinder that's uniform in shape and thickness. That's all fine and good, but I have this big old wad of stuff that's attached by gravity and friction to the wheel head. How do you get that up so you can start? Everybody can throw when you've already got a cylinder going. You can pull, easily pull uh, once it's up off the wheel head, but how do you get it up there in a hurry? Robin Hopper has a video and, and he, sh he shows a technique called a claw move. And basically, the, this hand here grips like this. The thumb pushes in underneath and the fingers are on the inside. I do a slightly modified version of that. And what you do is I'm going to grip and then roll this up like that. And it will bring, it, it will give me a fairly uniform cylinder to start pulling from. The, my right hand is just re-centering and compressing the top of the... Now I've got a fairly uniform cylinder and you can start pulling pretty quickly from that position. I would sit day, day after day watching this guy beside me throwing these huge pots without any effort and I could not figure out what this guy was doing and doing so easily. When we start pulling, most everyone will have the outside hand on the wheel head to start with at a lower level than the inside hand. Because as you know, you lift your hands up and the clay will go through in an S shape through your fingers. The thickness of the clay is the distance that the outside hand needs to be below the inside hand. Most of us get our hands in position and they start pulling and you just pull all the way up and then you get a ring of clay in your hand from the outside of the pot. And that's because your outside hand is too close to the inside hand. I was surfing in Florida and I, the, the waves weren't anything so basically I was sitting on my board. I wasn't actually catching anything. And the wave, you know, the wave, it wasn't a wave, it was just a swell. And I went up and over the swell and I rode down the back side of the wave and I got, and it was, it clicked. Your hand on the outside of the pot is like being on a surfboard on the back side of a wave and you ride the back side of the wave in.